cubic yards of earth gave way and literally avalanched down the hill into the bottom of Bluebird Canyon. And that's about the same amount of dirt that would fill over 10,000 swimming pools. It's a lot of mass moving very fast with a lot of energy. Now, when this landslide first occurred, many of my colleagues were kind of surprised. It wasn't a rainy day. I'm used to landslides happening on a rainy day. Well, deep-seated landslides like this don't necessarily happen on a rainy day. They happen when uh, the water table has been elevated, and it takes many months for water to percolate down deep into the earth. Usually, seasonal bursts of heavy rain dump 12 to 13 inches on Southern California. The rain runs off before it's absorbed. However, the 30-plus inches of rain that soaked the area during 2004-2005 was a persistent rain over a long period of time, saturating the earth from October to May. This landslide is a bedrock landslide. And the bedrock in this area is what we call the Topanga Formation. And it's a mixture of sands and silts and clays. In particular, there's a layer at a depth of anywhere from 50 to 80 feet. The clay that the landslide failed on is a very plastic clay. And by that I mean when you get it wet, it's a consistency of Play-Doh. Not very high strength material. So when you tilt that up and then you compound the problem by having a, a very heavy rainfall year, twice normal rain, that builds up water into this and softens the clay, uh, that led to the failure. The deep landslide claimed 20 homes, but miraculously, no lives. The interior structures of the homes are just crumbled into, into hundreds and thousands of pieces. Walls fallen down, um, granite countertops broken in half, cabinets ripped off of walls. It's complete devastation in, in most of these homes that you see behind me. I would call this an engineering disaster simply from the failure to recognize that this was a hazardous area. That's a great challenge and it's one of the things that geologists need to do whenever they investigate an area for new development. But clearly in this case, in retrospect, we can tell that this was an unsuitable place to build houses. This was not the first time a hillside gave way in Bluebird Canyon. A huge landslide consumed part of the neighborhood on October 1st, 1978 just a few hundred feet from the 2005 landslide. 24 families lost homes then. Most of the homes on the hillside were constructed before building codes were as strict as they are today. At the time these houses were built, there really wasn't any kind of geotechnical analysis or geologic assessment of stability. They more or less just came along and graded the flat pad and built their houses. Uh, I'm, I'm confident that they didn't know what kind of risks that they were facing. In August 2005, red-tagged homes were demolished and a massive hillside reconstruction project began. We're uh, attacking this slide stabilization in several phases. Um, the first, most important things we have to do are to get the canyon opened up and put in a storm drain system. And secondly, we're going to be stabilizing the headscarf area so that we don't lose more homes and possibly a street up above those homes. We'll be putting in caissons and tiebacks up there. And we'll also be removing all the homes on the landslide and degrading it to seal the fissures and try to establish drainage so that we don't end up with a lot of mud and debris flows. When we're all done with the uh, repair plan, we will have put back the slope that was there before, but way better. Uh, it will be anchored into the bedrock like it should have been in the first place and we'll have put in with it uh, proper storm drains that will, when it rains hard, will collect that runoff and get it underground in a way so that it doesn't uh, saturate the soil and mobilize it again and it will be a perfectly safe building site uh, following current building codes today. The cost of the repair plan is estimated at over $10 million to be paid by the state, the city of Laguna Beach, and Bluebird Canyon residents. Most residents plan to move back onto the hillside once it's repaired, placing their faith in the skill of engineers. When you wonder whether homes should be built in places like this at all, when they have 
discover these kind of geological uh, risks? I think the answer still is yes, carefully, surgically. As far as this disaster goes, it is a disaster because of a lack of engineering. Uh, had there been proper engineering before and during the house construction, this would have been prevented.